All right, so once our drone is in the field of a car, it's license plate, all we need to do is we go to our app and we hit the uh, image capture button. And once we do that, it's going to take a picture from the drone and send that image along with GPS and timestamp and any relevant metadata to our server uh, for processing. So we realized after the fact that it was a bit hard to see what was going on on the Android screen. So hopefully we can give you a better view here. On the Android screen, we have a live camera feed from the drone. And down here we have the capture button, which when you press, it captures an image and sends that off to our server for license plate recognition, data aggregation, and enforcement logic uh, to flag sightable vehicles. We'll talk more about that next. All right, we just saw how the drone collects its evidence. Let's take a closer look at what happens on the server. Our server runs four separate processes. First and foremost is a service to accept the incoming images and data from the drone. Our second process is a service to run license plate recognition on those images. Our library makes use of OpenALPR, which is an open source library that provides us with license plate recognition. This library is perfect for our needs. Given an image, it's able to locate the bounding box of a license plate and report out the top predictions of the text. This library is able to accommodate multiple license plates within an image and allows us to optimize for specific regions and even skew it, for example, if an image is taken from a higher angle. Our third process takes the results from the license plate recognition and stores it into our MySQL database. Our final process runs our user interface. Let's take a closer look at what happens there. Let's take a look at our user interface. Upon signing in, users are presented with a summary page, which includes visualizations as well as statistics on the system. Next, on the citations page, we display all pending citations to the user. Users have the option of either verifying, that is, to process a citation, or dismissing it, if it was a fluke, for example. We also have a search tool that allows users to search for citations within a specific time frame or even for a specific vehicle. Note that by default, we only show citable evidence. If you would like to see all evidence that has been collected, simply hit the toggle button here to display that evidence. So one of the features we have really liked to add to this project was autonomous flight. And DJI provides uh, what they call the SDK for waypoints. And the way that works is you specify a GPS location as well as an altitude, and the drone will autonomously fly directly to that point. The only problem being is if there's any obstacle in the way, say a bird flies in the way, a tree branch, or anything, the, the drone will actually fly straight into that and crash. And uh, we've actually experienced that during development. And uh, after discussing with our client, we decided to drop the idea of autonomous. Um, newer drones, the recently released Phantom 4, has a built-in intelligent object uh, avoidance. Um, we're making, uh, making our system a great platform, and we're hoping future teams would decide to build upon that and include, uh, include such features. So another feature we talked about is the idea of parking zones. Different, different streets in different cities will have different ideas of how much time a car can park in a specific spot. So in a production environment, you want to accommodate for all these specific different time zones. And uh, it's imperative for a future project to, to have this feature built in if you want to have a production system that you can market to the world.